everybody. Welcome. I'm um, presenting his research on effective, effectiveness of dolphin-assisted therapy among veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. Please welcome Cameron Bullock. So, uh, my research is called The Effectiveness of Dolphin Assisted Therapy in Veterans with uh, PTSD. So what you uh, see in front of you is a picture of veterans holding a flag for dolphins. We uh, kind of use this as a poster for the actual therapy um, for the company that it's with. Uh, so it's just kind of for fun. Let's get right into it. Um, every day, 22 veterans commit suicide. That equates to one every 65 minutes. Um, there's a popular commercial going around for the Wounded Warriors Project that, that says this stat. And when I heard it, I was just deeply affected. Um, so I had heard of this place called the Island Dolphin Care, and um, I'll tell you a little bit about them and themselves in a second. 53% um, of returning veterans have sought treatment for PTSD. That is a uh, spike since uh, the previous years, simply because um, older veterans from Vietnam are finding it a little bit easier to come out now and say, I have PTSD. Um, back, of course, in Vietnam, the war wasn't supported, so they would, they were a little more withdrawn. Um, and then uh, just a brief description of PTSD. It's uh, if an individual experiences a traumatic event, that they will start showing symptoms of de depression, anxiety, um, flashbacks of that traumatic event. Uh, so Island Dolphin Care itself, it uh, was developed for uh, special, children with special needs and their families. They go during the week, it's a whole five day thing. They will paint with them, they'll teach them how to use an iPad. Uh, this is a great place for children with autism, children that don't know how to speak, don't know how to communicate, to go and uh, learn these things. But uh, recently, in 2009, they started up the only dolphin assisted recreational therapy for veterans in the United States. In fact, it's in uh, North America. The only other one is in Dubai, um, but it's not that well known because it's in Dubai. Uh, so I just have a quick video here, just talking about how it got started up. This week's edition of Aquatic Adventures is about a Key Largo family who went through years of struggling with their young son's health, but his struggle led to something bigger that they could have never imagined, a special place in the Keys where people with special needs find hope. Here's CBS 4's Jeff Berardelli. The first few years were desperate um, in terms of his recovery. Peter Hoagland is talking about his son, Joe. Before the age of eight, Joe had to endure five open heart surgeries. And to make matters worse, a stroke paralyzed most of his body. The neurology teams that interviewed us and, and uh, examined Joe said that there's really not much hope. But Joe's mom, Dina, was determined to find something to help her son. Joe loved animals and he loved the water. So Dina took him to Dolphins Plus in Key Largo. Dina and Joe started working with a dolphin named Fonzie, and the success that Joss, Joe, that Joe saw uh, in terms of his recovery was uh, unbelievable. When I saw Fonzie, all I, all I wanted to do was play with him um, because he was really the only one who accepted me. And with the help of Fonzie, Joe's attitude, optimism, and health improved dramatically. Now 24 years old, He's a perfectly healthy adult. But the story doesn't end there. Shortly after seeing Joe's response to working with the dolphins, his mom and dad decided to start a program to help other people with special needs. In 1997, they founded Island Dolphin Care. For the past 14 years, the nonprofit has treated countless people with special needs. It's Joe's way of paying it forward. Every day we're working with, with, new, with new kids, um, even, uh, even wounded warriors from uh, Afghanistan, soldiers returning from Afghanistan and Iraq. But it all started with Joe. Um, you know, if we hadn't seen the success that we'd seen with Joe, I, I don't think we'd be here today. Um, so he's our inspiration. Some may say that Joe is a living mo- Alright, so that's just kind of a, a brief description of how um, this place got started. And something that is uh, truly special is that all therapy sessions, whether it be for veterans or children with special needs, are sponsored. Uh, about a couple times a year, they will have a giant dinner. It's $100 a plate, and people will just donate money to this place. Uh, because they realize on families, uh, it's hard to come up with these funds to fly all the way to Key Largo. And they've actually seen people come from Germany and Japan. Actually, the majority of their um, clientele is from uh, international. 
Uh, so let's talk about animal assisted <coughs> therapy uh, and the benefits that they provide. One of the most common ones is equestrian horse therapy. Now, the biggest benefit that equestrian therapy provides is if you had a neurological disorder. So say you were in a, a car accident and you had trouble walking. Well, a horse's hip movement is the exact same to our hip movement, or it's the closest in terms. Um, so we would put you on a horse, we'd tell you to close your eyes, and we would just tell the horse to walk. And the natural movement that your hips will do when the horse walks is what you would do when you're walking. It tells your brain how to do it properly. Um, canine support has really been used for veterans, but it's more of a companionship. It's to build trust. It's to have them rely on something again and, and, uh, in, a, in a positive way. And then dolphins, we see that it's kind of embodied all of these and more. We see a higher reduction in anxiety. We see a higher reduction in depression because they're getting to have an interaction with an animal that you rarely see in the ocean. Um, you're getting to touch it. You're getting to kiss it. Uh, it it's truly a life-changing event. Um, but what makes dolphins so much special? Blur. Okay, so this is a, a foot push. Basically, the veteran would lay on a stomach, dolphin, two dolphins, one on each foot, come up and push behind you. But with some veterans returning with missing limbs, how would, we do, how would they do that? Uh, so for instance, while I was down there, there was a Vietnam veteran who lost his leg. So the second he got in the water, there were dolphins just circling his body. They knew something was wrong. They realized he didn't have a leg. So we were all kind of on pins and needles when the command was given to do a foot push. You know, what were they going to do? Were they going to push what was left of his leg? Uh, was the dolphin just going to swim away? And instinctually, he actually pushed his hand. He didn't go to his stub. One went to his leg and one went to his hand. And that shows problem solving in dolphins. Uh, so that's, that's a huge benefit that these provide is that for any situation, dolphins can adapt. Uh, and if they don't do it instinctually, we can definitely train them to do it. Uh, so this is what kind of their day looks like when they get there. They uh, do introductions, kind of just what branch you are in, when you serve, what you serve, kind of just a, a general bonding between the veterans. Um, then we do artistic relaxation. We make t-shirts, we paint uh, paintings. We, it's kind of just a really relaxed feel. We want them to know that this is a safe place. We're here just to have fun and we're here to to bond, and if you want to share, you absolutely can, but there's no pressure for it. A barbecue is kind of had, but the barbecue, the more emphasis is put on us, the staff, sharing with them. We want, to, we want them to share our stories, us to show our, share our stories, and them to share their stories with us. This is when we want to bond with them one-on-one. -on -one. And then the actual dolphin swim, which is where we see the majority of the benefits come from. This is when uh, anxiety is reduced, depression is reduced. So this is, there's two different types of swim. There's the structured swim, where there's a trainer um, on the side, and he tells the dolphin what to do. Give kisses, uh, ride the dolphin, uh, and this, is, this causes the veteran to trust the dolphin. The veteran is asking the dolphin to do something, and the dolphin is doing it. It's a very give and take relationship. Most of the time, when these guys come home, they don't know how to bond with something again. They don't know how to trust something again. So this is a very vulnerable time when we're asking them, trust this animal, trust this, it, it will not let you down. Um, but also they start bonding with the dolphins that they swim with. The uh, dolphins bond with us just as much as we bond with them. If a dolphin doesn't like you, it's going to make it known within the first couple minutes. Um, so this is really a, a chance for them to bond. And then there's a natural swim. After you've gotten to know some dolphins, after they've gotten to know you, you put on snorkel gear, you maybe get a full noodle, and you just float around in the lagoon. You swim with them, they'll swim around you, they might touch you, you can touch them. Very relaxed time. Um, we just put a huge emphasis on go at your own pace. You know, the dolphins like you, and you know it. Uh, so this is kind of what the structured swim would look like. Uh, there would be a trainer, um, and these are two veterans in the water, and this is just kind of fun. And this is the natural swim. This is the lagoon where there are six dolphins, um, and then these are three separate families uh, of the veterans. The veterans are allowed to take one family member in the water at a time. They can bring more with them, um, but just one at a time. We don't want it to be overwhelming for the dolphins. So this is them just swimming and having a good time. It's kind of dark, but there's a dolphin in that uh, bottom left corner. Um, and so these are trainers that you see up on these platforms that uh, they will give the commands when they're doing the structured swim and uh, stuff like that.
Okay, so what is, what's behind Island Dolphin Care that makes it work? What's the bread and butter? And it's that they combined two already effective therapies. You have group therapy and you have pet therapy. Both are proven to already work quite well. Um, of course, veteran, for, some, for people like a veteran, they're going to open up and they're going to bond a lot more with another veteran, someone who's known what they've gone through and can share those same experiences. Um, so we want them to open up. We want them, of course, to share with other veterans, but we want them to open up with us. And that's how we found that pet therapy plays into it. Is that towards the beginning, they're a little more just to the veterans. They kind of have their own group. But after the interaction, after they've swam with the dolphins and they have a smile on their face, uh, then they'll open up to us and they'll, they'll just cry tears of joy that they're able to, to just, just tell us how they feel. And they haven't done that in months or even years. Um, but also is that the, we want the whole family to participate. We don't just want this to be a one-man one show. We don't want just the veteran to feel the benefits. But we want the family to see the benefits uh, that the veteran has. We want them to, to see the veteran smile, to laugh. That's such a big part because taking care of a veteran with PTSD wears down on the family members a lot. Uh, this is just um, two letters that people have written Island Dolphin Care, uh, and then one of them says, we, are conti we continue to be amazed at the positive reactions to their experience, and we feel that together we are truly serving their needs. Um, and that just, speak one just speaks wonders. That in the rest of this letter, it said, we can't provide what these veterans need, and you are doing it for us. And it's an organization dedicated to helping veterans, but they fell short. And this place is picking up where they left off. Where they left off. All right. So let's talk about uh, the research that I'm doing. So it's pretty much uh, an evaluation of the program. How efficient is it? But we want to look at what symptoms of PTSD are suppressed, why they're suppressed, and how long they're suppressed for. So uh, we came up with three already known surveys that highlight the three biggest symptoms of PTSD: depression, anxiety and then just general quality of life. This is more, are you satisfied with life? Do you sit in a room with the, with the blinds closed and the curtains drawn? Um, do you laugh? Do you smile? Can you cry? Uh, uh, but also for it to be a pure study, we needed a control group. So because the Miami Veterans Association works with the veterans at IDC, uh, we have used them as a control group. So our control group uh, is veterans who are diagnosed with PTSD, but they do other recreational therapy. They go rock climbing, they'll go kayaking, they'll go snake wrangling. Um, and this is two veterans that I actually met. The guy on the left here, his name, uh, okay, well the guy over there, his, uh, <laughs> his name is Barry, and I met him at Island Dolphin Carry. It was his first trip, and when I met him, he was just torn up. He said that the majority of the time he sat in his room and he watched television, and he didn't talk to his mom, he didn't talk to his wife, he didn't talk to his kids. He just sat there, and he just didn't know why. He couldn't express his feelings anymore. It was just beginning to tear down on his life. And uh, Barry actually tried committing suicide a couple times, but uh, luckily did not go through with it, uh, or it was interrupted. So he, he came uh, to Island Dolphin Care with his mother-in-law, actually. Um, I know. <laughs> and uh, when they left, he had such a smile on his face, um, and such, and because of Island Dolphin Care, he's been able to get into other recreational therapies, such as snake wrangling. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, every there's a python hunting season in Florida. You go to the Everglades, there's kind of a competition, and you hunt. Uh, and there is a veterans group that does that for therapy, but they are the only group that will not kill the pythons. They refuse to kill them. They'll give them to the government, and the government can kill them. Um, but they don't want any part in, in killing what they find to be a beautiful creature, and that just speaks wonders to me. Um, and this, this is just uh, a picture of, of other therapies they do. Is that they'll take them out, they'll go bowling, and they'll try and bond. Um, yeah. So this is what our surveys look like. Uh, they will complete a survey before they arrive or as they arrive. We just want to get a base measurement of how they're feeling. Are you depressed today? Are you anxious today? Why? They'll fill out a survey the second they get done with the dolphin interaction. We want to see 
immediately after, why, why were they, or what was suppressed, how much, are you anxious at all, are you depressed at all, are you sad at all, just, just tell us, then tell us why. Um, and then we'll do a one week, a two week, and a one month. And that's just to see how long they su stay suppressed for. And we've actually been able to see, uh, just through the veterans telling us, is that the uh, symptoms start coming back severely about two weeks. Uh, so through them telling us that, we have been able to figure out a way where we will take pictures and we will make recordings of the veterans swimming. And then we send it to them two weeks later. And we say, look at this every hour, every month, every year, every day. Just look at it. And we want to know, is the memory of what you did, the memory of the experiences you had at this place, enough to suppress those symptoms again? So that's just kind of a further um, study that we're hoping to, to do. But um, from what we've heard, just briefly, is that it is causing um, some relief. Uh, this is an ongoing study, so it will not be completed until May of 2015. That's when we'll have all of our data. Um, we hope to see this published. When a published study like this, and it has the, the seal of approval by the government, uh, they're able to use it for grants. Um, other vet, it's able to be put out in like newsletters by veterans associations and stuff like that. But then also there's up and coming veterans therapy programs that we want to see. Uh, we want to adapt this study that we've done and give it to them. And we say, do it in house or let us do it for you, just like this one. And let's see if yours is effective and what we can do. Because when you have a track record like IDC has, we want all the other ones to be like this. Um, and this is kind of just saying that, that the biggest obstacle that the veterans face is reconnecting with their family. Um, and that Island Dolphin Care works because we provide them with uh, an environment that's fun. We do things with them that they're not going to be able to do anywhere else. Yeah, you can go swim with a dolphin pretty much anywhere in Florida, but you'll never get to paint with us. You'll never get to just naturally swim with a dolphin with us. You'll never have the therapeutic session that you have with us anywhere else. And that's what we're trying to, uh, to preach at Island Dolphin Care. So, there you go. it is that really helps to suppress the PTSD symptoms? It, it, do you think it's a feeling of the unconditional love that they receive from these total strangers and the dolphins themselves, or what, 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 what is your opinion or idea on that? I think um, one of the biggest things is that you're, you're being able, dolphins are a very social creature, um, so they are socially inept right now. PTSD causes that. Okay. Um, it, I guess not in everybody, but in some people. So when they're there, they're able to have a social interaction. We're providing them with a positive social environment. Um, and that just brings out wonders. But it's, it's also the environment that we give them. Uh, it's, it's a very, it's, it's in the keys, it's very relaxed. It's, you know, it's flip-flops, we don't put any pressure on them to tell us, but they end up telling us everything. Because, um, like I said, they're having an, an interaction with an animal that you don't see every day. Um, and that's, that's really the biggest thing is that, hey, you know what I did today? I played with a dolphin. It's fascinating. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, like, I've done this program several times. The Hoaglins are very, like, they're close family friends. And I can definitely say that it works. Because I have Crohn's disease, and so, like, I had a lot of depression issues. And going here just really, like, helps, just lifts you up and... The dolphins are really cute. So. <laughs> <laughs> that does help, yes. <laughs> Why might a dolphin not like somebody? <laughs> uh, a lot of times it would Like, do they pick up body simple. language or something? Or? It, it is body language. Some male dolphins don't like other males. Okay. They'll get in the water and they'll feel threatened. You put six dolphins in a lagoon, um, they're going to... Males, there's going to be a dolphin. Okay, male. yeah. Um, so that's usually the biggest reason. Yeah, that's interesting. If someone's pregnant, they're gonna the dolphins will just go right to them. They mm -hmm. they can sense that a person's pregnant, huh. um, so they will protect. I don't know if you've ever heard stories of wild dolphins protecting pregnant people. I don't know if that's true, but they will definitely uh, spend more time with someone that is pregnant as opposed to someone that's not. Hmm. 
What do you do in that situation if the dolphins don't like somebody? Usually, uh, well, if they don't like someone, we a dolphin is kind of like a little kid. If you keep its attention long enough, it's going to forget about something else. So um, if we go back to this one, we would have the person swim right here. The dolphin doesn't like him, swim way down there. Not in, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, of course, the dolphin's still going to realize the person's in the water, but we're going to give them commands that takes their attention away. Uh, so during the structured swim, it would be very stimulating for the dolphin. During the natural swim, we'd see if those feelings regressed of the dolphin. If not, we might, um, we usually just do their own, our own training session with the dolphin to keep them preoccupied while everyone else is swimming. So it will be more like one individual dolphin? Right. It's usually not like a group. It's quite rare, rare that a dolphin doesn't like somebody, um, but if it does, usually we just switch them to another trainer. Have you noticed that if they see a picture, if, like the feelings get suppressed, that they're feeling sad, or does it? That's what we're hoping. Um, that's kind of what we're the next the, the survey we're going to launch is. That's what we're going to hope to see the biggest results is that when they get that, that they verbally they said yes, but I mean I, I don't feel comfortable telling you yes without any facts behind it. So. And maybe the novel, you know, because if you think, well, okay, like, what's the difference between doing dolphin therapy and having a golden retriever as a, you know, maybe it's, maybe part of it is the novelty of the dolphin, you know, that whole novelty. Like, yeah, okay, yeah everybody pets a dog, but I think right. there is something that's novel about that experience that, you know, can give it lasting power in terms of, of positive feelings and that, that sort of thing. So maybe that's a factor, too. Yeah, and just adding to that, I don't know, I mean, you said everybody can go swim with dolphins. I don't know, how many in here have? No. Yeah. Well, I, I have, in Kenya, when I was first learning to scuba dive, and I would still, this was many years ago, I would rate it as one of the top ten experiences of my life, um, swimming. Uh, you know, and I noticed, you know, for me, it was my first time, so I didn't know this didn't happen all the time, but my dive instructor, he got so excited, and, you know, we all got in, we swam with him for about an hour, uh, they just played with us, and and yeah, it's it's still that meaningful to me. And that many years ago, so yeah, I do think uh, it's obvious. You know, it's it's the whole program uh, that is effective. But I think it is the novelty, the uniqueness, our lack of contact. Um, you know, with dolphins, uh, that's that's very powerful.